Yeah, there we go. All right, good. That's all right. Um, everyone. So um, I'm here to, to talk about uh, Landlock, which is a kind of a new uh, security feature from, uh, well, uh, provided by Linux, the Linux scan. And um, yeah, so the idea is to um, introduce uh, quickly to uh, Landlock and uh, give you a particular example of how to patch an application. In this case, it would be a Lighty, or the, the web server. So if you have a, well, I, I, am, I prepared this uh, tutorial uh, for people using a uh, uh, laptop. Uh, so if you want to use one, uh, please do. So I, I, do the, I, I do the tutorial myself. Um, OK. Uh, but the thing is, uh, anyway, so the slides are already public, and the, uh, the related files are also public. So I'll give you the link uh, just uh, in a moment. OK, so um, yeah, Landlock is available since last year. Um, and so the thing is, the thing to, to, to keep in mind that it's uh, a work in progress. So uh, it's already upstream uh, usable and in most, um, well, um, distros. Um, but you cannot, um, the access control rights are not complete yet. So there's a, well, a subset of it, which is uh, still useful. Uh, but not everything. So uh, it cannot be compared uh, directly to a Linux or stuff like that. Um, so here the idea is to uh, sandbox an application, especially a network application, because we are in a network conference. And um, yeah, to, to do that uh, with uh, um, Vagrant. So um, is there someone here with a laptop, or should I skip this part? So do someone, uh, is there someone that wants to, to follow that? Um, take this for no. OK. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So if people are online, um, just right now, um, so I pushed. Um, the content in this repository. So it's not very really clear, but uh, so it's uh, github.com slash landlock dash LSM. And it's a uh, latest uh, repository, which is a uh, tuto uh, netdevconf uh, 2022. Okay, so um, well, I <laughs> skip from this part. Uh, so the idea was to uh, set up. Um, uh, Vagrant virtual machine uh, to experiment and uh, using um, um, Arch Linux uh, as a guest. Um, okay, so if you, you want to do that at home, you can just follow the instruction here. Um, so I do that. Uh, well, it's my laptop is uh, almost ready, so uh, I'll skip this part. Okay. Um, yeah, so why sandboxing? Um, so um, as you may know, security is not absolute. Uh, you cannot protect everything and be sure that there will never be any vulnerabilities. Um, so uh, yeah, it is assumed that with enough skills and time, uh, most applications, uh, services could be compromised. Um, as developer, well, there's two main problems. Uh, well, we don't want to be part of these um, attacks as much as possible, I mean, you know. Um, so yeah, even if we are developing a, a network service, um, a web server, a DHCP server, whatever, uh, well, you don't want your application to be exploited, of course. And you want, you want your application to be exploited to um, and to be used as a way to, to go in a user machine. Um, and yeah, so we want to protect users, our users. And uh, yeah, so every running application or services on machine, of course, increase um, the attack surface uh, on this machine, on this system. So sandboxing here, uh, the idea is to, so sandboxing is mainly an access control system. Uh, the idea is to isolate um, software components. So that might be um, processes, applications, set of applications, uh, whatever you think, um, from the rest of the system. 
So the idea is, if this software component is compromised, is vulnerable, uh, well, we want to, to make it um, in its own part of the system. Uh, so yeah, we, we want uh, as much possible to make it not much usable to jump to another software component. Um, yeah, and so the idea with something that at first when you launch an application, uh, let's say a services, a service, um, well, it should be trusted because uh, you should have uh, everything in place uh, to check your uh, software. And uh, yeah, at first uh, it should come from a trusted file, you know, installed by the distro and so on. But um, as long as, as it leaves, and especially uh, patients um, receiving requests from the network, um, well, it can be compromised. So it can uh, become malicious. Uh, the two main properties of sandboxing, well, um, in a shell, is uh, to follow the risk privilege principle. Um, so, um, yeah, to not require more privileges, to uh, drop privileges. And uh, yeah, to be innocuous and composable, to have innocuous and composable security policies. This means that uh, you want uh, a lot of different applications on your system to sandbox themselves without impacting other part of the system. Um, okay, and here, what is Nanoc? Nanoc is a way to create Linux uh, sandboxes. Um, so it is mainly an access control system available to unprivileged users. So uh, it follows the principle that you don't need to have more privileges to drop privileges or to drop accesses. Uh, and yeah, it is usable thanks to three dedicated syscalls and internal developers to uh, embed their application in the service, um, send the thing to add on the application. And yeah, it's still a development, still, it is still useful, uh, but um, yeah, you cannot do everything for now, but it's uh, coming. Uh, the first main set of access control restriction that you can enforce uh, is related to the file system. Uh, so yeah, you can restrict most um, common user uh, uh, file um, access uh, so that the way, um, for example, to, to, to allow a process to execute some other processes, uh, to write or read some files, to create new files and so on. And yeah, one thing to, to keep in mind here, here is that uh, because it is uh, composable uh, and unprivileged, well, every security policies must be ephemeral. So unlike, for example, AC Linux or the um, major uh, Linux CD modules like that, you cannot tag uh, files in the file system because, well, it may not well, you may not be able to do that because you're on privilege. You know, you cannot uh, write to a slash etc or whatever to uh, describe an access control. And now network restrictions. Um, so this is a pretty new feature, which is not upstream, upstream yet, um, but um, I hope it will be in the 6.2 uh, release of Linux. The idea is to be able to restrict sandbox processes and to protect uh, processes outside of the sandbox. Um, but yeah, it is not a full firewall, and that's not a goal. Uh, the idea is to, um, well, kind of enable app developers or service developers to uh, create uh, app centric firewalls. So uh, there's two kind of access rights right now. Uh, the ability to bind to a bot. Uh, so you can specify a set of bots and uh, well, your application will then be able uh, be allowed to bind on these bots. And you can do the same for um, other ports, but for uh, TCP connections. So uh, this is mostly targeting, uh, well, network clients. Um, and yeah, so it's, uh, the main developer is not here, uh, but uh, he's uh, uh, Constantine. So um, you'll see on the slides, there's some, some links, so uh, you can take a look at uh, the LKML mainly. Okay, um, so now how to patch an application? Uh, well, first we need to define a thread model. 
So uh, what matters to you? Uh, which data are uh, sensible? And uh, which part is initially trusted? And where does uh, untrusted data come from? Um, from the network most of the time. Then we need to identify complex part of the code. Um, so um, where is there a lot of things that uh, an attacker can find bugs, especially in testing bugs? So um, for example, there's a lot of parsing stuff, uh, either parsing like network formats or file formats, whatever. So that is complex and there's a lot of bugs in this kind of code. Then we need to identify and patch the configuration handling. So the idea is to not, well, the idea with something is that user should not configure it. It should just use an application, a service, and it will be sandboxed uh, like this. So for this to work, um, well, as a developer, I need to uh, take, well, um, to, to, uh, to get uh, and understand the configuration, the application configuration. And well, for one part, we use it to, let's say, to uh, bind on a TV port somewhere. And at the same time, to configure the sandboxing. So that's the same configuration file. Um, and the fourth part is uh, to identify in patch um, where it makes sense and where it is um, useful to, um, um, well, to sandbox with uh, as simply as possible. Um, one important aspect is application compatibility. Uh, so we'll go quickly on that. But as I said before, Lanoc is gaining more and more features over time. Um, this means that uh, as developers, you need to take care of uh, the uh, kernel which is running on your users. So you can. You, you may not know that. Uh, so if you're developing for, uh, let's say, a 6.1 kernel, uh, well, you may want still to have some sandboxing for users using uh, your application, but with uh, older kernels. So uh, there's everything uh, to make it as easy as possible. And uh, most importantly, to be able to enforce the best for security. So, Whatever feature available, you need to be well. You should, uh, well, use them to protect your users. Okay, so let's see how it works. Um, so, like I said, there's three syscalls. The first one is a landlock create toolset syscall, um, and the special flag which is a landlock create toolset version, which um, able to get the landlock ABI version. And thanks to that, you can uh, know which kind of features are supported uh, by the running kernel. Then uh, you may want to create a rule set. So rule set is a set of rules. And you define what you want to block by default, what, what action uh, you want to deny. And then after that, you'll be able to add exceptions to this deny by default uh, rule set. So um, yeah, you define likely, um, well, okay, it's a strict analog reset at ATTR. It's a set of files. So here it is dedicated to the file system, but we'll see later uh, the kind of same construct for uh, the network. Then uh, you call analog create rule set. So um, the first is called with uh, this um, rule set as arguments. And here you are, you get a rule set file descriptor. Then you need to add rules, so exceptions to this deny by default security policy. So for that, you define which kind of rights uh, you want to allow and for which parts of the kernel. So in this example, it is uh, for the slash user hierarchy, but um, for the network part will be uh, for port, network port. And then you uh, call a second uh, system code, which is uh, landlock add rule with the rule set file descriptor and with this rule definition, so path beneath in this case. And the last step is to enforce the rule set. So um, first you need to uh, kind of pledge the kernel that will not 
gain more privileges, uh, for example, by uh, executing uh, set UID binaries. So that's uh, why there's a PICTL command here. And then you need to call the third analog syscall, which is uh, learn linguistic self with the rule set file descriptor. So uh, this time, we need to, the kernel will, will return here uh, if there is no error. Uh, then the current set will be sandbox with the rule sets uh, that you defined just before. Okay. Um, so the idea is, is to, um, well, we have a web server, which is okay, uh, except that uh, web developers, well, for a different reason, uh, they included some PHP pages uh, which contain uh, vulnerabilities. Um, and here, sandboxing the server itself uh, helps to mitigate the impact of such vulnerabilities that could be exposed. So the idea here is to deny uh, server uh, connections. Um, so, um, yeah, for this case, I'll take uh, light T, so light HTTPD. Uh, so it's a kind of a kind of simple web server um, with an NC. And uh, uh, yeah, so we need to build, patch, and test it uh, using Vagrant and uh, an Arch Linux VM. So of course, uh, this is not exhaustive um, uh, because of uh, time constraints. Um, so there's basically four steps here. The first one is to build an environment. So uh, I'll skip this part. Um, get a source, uh, get a source code, um, look at the uh, uh, configuration format to, to know where we should uh, patch uh, the server. And then, well, find this uh, kind of sweet spot uh, to restrict the process, patch it, install it, and test it. Um, so yes. Do we want to take questions now or at the end? You can go. Yeah. yeah, because I have a question because you showed the, like, the flags that will be available for a given kernel version. Will they be somehow versioned? You, you know, we will be able to easily pull the flags that were available in the kernel 6.0 or, or... You mean the, the new features? Uh, I mean, you will add features on top of it. But uh, you can also use the like previous version yeah. of those. It's it's it will it, be somehow versions in the kernel so that when you are at kernel seven zero, you will be easily able to tell whether you know which flags were available in kernel six. So or yeah, the idea is if uh, you don't change your code, it will work as it works yeah, for any convention. So the idea is, just the yeah. So um, the question was, well, um, if we have a newer kernel, uh, so first, can we use other features? So that's yes. And um, so I guess this: how do we know which features are available, mm -hmm. right? Available, like, in kernel 6.1, yeah. So, so the idea is not to not rely on the kernel version as is, but to use a long log create cell syscall with a get version flag, okay? This way you get a number, and according to the long log documentation, you can map this, this number, this version, to a set of features, okay? So as a developer, you know if you get this version, you know which features are available, okay? And you can use uh, them safely. Even in kernel 7.0, that's kernel 6.2 supported those features at this level. So the mapping between the landlock KBI version and the kernel versions uh, are in the documentation. Okay. And uh, yeah, if, if you don't if you don't change your code, it will still work uh, as it did for a previous kernel. If you get uh, new features and you don't use them, they will not well, you will not change at all. 
to uh, uh, yeah, well, how to tell differently because you know uh, imagine that in the future uh, if you want to develop certain application and wants to have it also run on older mm -hmm. cameras which is well, yes. what we ever do every day right uh, how can you tell which flags were enabled at this given kernel can you tell it from you know will it be somehow yeah, it's... So that you can tell it from a just by looking at the documentation of kernel mm -hmm. 7 or mm -hmm. you have to go back and be you know which kernel supported which flag uh, the idea is to put this information in the documentation mm -hmm. okay so the documentation will grow and yeah, then, you know, yeah okay. but I thought, I thought you said get version will give you like a bit map of support no it will get you a number okay. because it, it is simpler but then as the reply you can take a look at the documentation and and map this number to what so set think, of features I think that's the Rather than going, oh, 7.0 must be in X. Yeah. The, the idea is to uh, kind of uh, not uh, write this code in the kernel, but write this code in a library that would be yeah. used. Sure. But, yeah. but then you could feature lock with the kernel. Yeah, yeah, so if you want to have a feature map, yeah, use a library that does that. Mm -hmm. If you want to do all by hand, you can do it uh, as you wish. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, quickly, so, um, so, not sure we see a lot here. Um, um, so, I will, so, I will launch uh, the VM, and so I will not patch the code here because it doesn't make sense because you don't uh, have a laptop with all setup. Um, but you can do this at home. Um, but uh, what we'll do is launch the server with the native Lighty version, so the uh, Vanilla and Sandbox version, and see the take a look at the, the server and the vulnerability. And then uh, we'd switch to a sandbox version and see what the difference. Okay, um, so uh, not sure what, what the state of this uh, this uh, virtual machine right now. So what what I do is to reinstall um, the original version of the server. Okay. So uh, we are running. Um, so, so you'll see the, um, well, we'll first try to uh, reach this. Um, Okay, so it's not, it's a, yeah, a bit small, but anyway. So here I have my server and you see, well, uh, I have two nice button, nice link, and I can see the kernel here and the commands. So that's uh, handy. And uh, so, yeah, it's not, I cannot do much here. Um, I try to, Try to zoom, change the resolution. 
It's a bit better. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I have my uh, nice um, nice website here. And so can you spot the issue here? It's kind of a, yeah. Sorry? Local input? So uh, if you take a look at the URL, you'll see, well, um, we have a, um, a variable that takes a file, local file in this case, and it changes uh, according to the link. Okay. So if we include uh, something else, um, well, it does nothing. But yeah, it looks kind of weird. So. Um, if you if we take a look at the, the file, well, uh, of course it's not a good idea here. So, uh, can I change that? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, better. Okay, um, so yeah, here I have a, well, a file inclusion, and uh, it's only get the content of a URL variable and include whatever that's inside here. Um, okay, so that's called a remote file inclusion or even a, fi a local file uh, inclusion attack. And uh, by default, this should not happen, but we never know. Okay. Um, so, um, if, you get, if we take a look at uh, the log, well, here are the log. And uh, so, um, yeah, I had an example in a rotation. So, if For example, let's say this is uh, something, uh, this is string somewhere on the internet. Well, if you change the content here with the string, it does nothing because it's not a good version. So, uh, Okay, so now I, I install, finally, I installed the Vanilla Lighty, so the version which is uh, standard, uh, unsandboxed. And well, it does what you should do, which is uh, execute this piece of PHP code, but could, it could be uh, whatever the vulnerabilities. Uh, just picked the easier way to, it's easier to, uh, to implement. And uh, yeah, here it does nothing malicious. It just uh, call the ID binary, uh, which does nothing except return, uh, well, ID information. Uh, but of course, you could do whatever you want. So uh, launch a real shell, get uh, connect back, and so on. OK, so what can we do about that? Uh, with sandboxing, we can do two things. The first one is to restrict access to the file system. Uh, for this web server. So I will not talk too much about that because uh, I already gave some talks uh, for Lonlock on the file system part. Um, but the other thing is with the network access control, uh, well, you can uh, restrict some actions. And what this kind of server should not do is to create connections outside of um, itself. So uh, in that case, when in fact, here, it downloads 
well, web page, right? So um, what I do um, is So, um, um, okay, let's, so um, I, I will, so here I have um, five patches, uh, which kind of describe uh, the different steps I use to sandbox uh, Lighty. Um, so this is available uh, on GitHub, so you can take a look later. Um, but uh, I think it should be interesting to uh, walk through uh, these patches to give you an idea what is needed. Um, OK, so as I said, the first part is to well, I didn't say that, but I will. Uh, here, the first step is to declare analog syscalls. Um, so libc includes um, analog syscall numbers, IDs, um, but uh, there's no uh, well function declarations for them. So we need to implement that. It's uh, very easy. And there's uh, an example in the kernel documentation. So initial, it mostly uh, copy past here, and I created uh, kind of stop syscalls. So um, yeah, so you you recognize the well the syscall names, and you just call the related syscall with a good um, C signature, the interface, and with a good syscall number. So I have a analog adult set syscall, analog adult syscall. And the linguistic Cisco. So that's simple. Then uh, the second step is uh, to uh, look where. Here, what we want to do is to restrict connections. So this kind of server should not be able to connect anywhere. But it, it, well, you should be able to bind some ports, um, but only a specific set of ports, which are uh, in this case, defined by the server configuration. So, and in this case, uh, for LIT, it is defined by the server.port uh, configuration. If we take a look uh, at the configuration, well, you see here, well, there's a server.port, so that's interesting. That's the value we, we like to, to get. Um, and um, okay, and so it's a well, all is a patch code, but uh, you'll see quickly. Um, the commission is stored in this uh, self conf. Um, structure. So it's really a mapping uh, to the configuration file format. So just get that. So in the function that kind of prepare the network according to the configuration, um, we create a new uh, rule which defines what is a load. So in this case, uh, it is the server should be allowed to bind to this port. That's why we have the landlock access net bind here and the port after declare in this uh, net service uh, structure. And then uh, once we're ready, which means we only pass uh, different network family, uh, network port, and so on. Um, we can here uh, add the rule to the rule set. So at first, well, the rule set is not defined, uh, but we know that it's the, the spot, sweet spot to uh, uh, call this syscall. 
Um, okay, and then there's uh, some logs, but that's not uh, very interesting right now. Um, so the second batch contained mainly, well, the lanlock.h inclusion, the strict uh, net service definition, and finally the call uh, to so this call that add uh, the new rule to the rule set, but the rule set is not defined yet. Okay. Um, so the third, third step, as seen here, is to well create this rule set, and we need to find somewhere in the software uh, code uh, kind of a, a state that is available at all different parts when you want to create a rule set, when you want to add rules, and finally when you want to enforce this rule set. And in this case, uh, what well, is kind of kind of it was kind of easy because. Uh, this uh, a struct server that exists and that contains uh, all data uh, related to the server and this struct is populated over time uh, with the configuration. So that's quite uh, handy and that's why I use that. So um, here you can see the struct server, so one part of it. Oops. It contains, well, different configurations. And here I just added a new entry, a new field, so we'll set file descriptor. Okay. And well, when this rule set is uh, initialized in here in a server init, uh, well, we initialize it to an invalid value. And when the server is free, well, you close this file descriptor. So um, even if uh, the value wasn't changed, which means it was a uh, minus one, it's still okay. Uh, close, we just close nothing and it will be good. Okay, so now we patch a part of, of the code that had a rule, but we didn't create it yet um, a rule set. So here we are creating a rule set and that is done in kind of the main uh, server function, which is called server main setup. So when you well, when light is uh, uh, set up, um, so well, as we saw just before, well, some slides before, I create uh, a rule set attribute structure, which contain uh, the set of access rights which are which will be denied by default, except for uh, well, exceptions uh, brought by rules. So in this case, uh, by default, I would uh, deny net bind on all ports and uh, TP connect on all ports too. Except of course, when there's a rule. And then um, in the next part of uh, this function, so main setup, um, I here, I create this rule set. So uh, it's the same, signature as we saw before. Um, I use the reset attribute uh, structure and get if anything is right, a uh, reset file descriptor, which I save in the struct server structure. The server struct in the server structure. Okay. And as you may have seen already, I then replace uh, the path of that patch to add a new rule with, uh, well, to use this rule set. So why now? Um, when light is started, uh, it creates an analog rule set. And when the configuration is passed, um, this rule set is used uh, to add a new rule according to the server port configuration. Uh, then the fourth part is um, to restrict the main process. So that's um, one of the most simple parts. Um, we just need to find where all the information is passed 
and when we didn't start yet to sever. Um, and that is in the case of Lighty, the so network sever init uh, function. So here we, uh, if uh, the set file is created, which means if uh, the running kernel supports Nenlock, then the rule set uh, file descriptor exists, so it is not minus one. And then this means that we can restrict the current thread with this rule set that got uh, poor port uh, rule uh, exceptions. Okay, so we're almost done. Um, this may work in some uh, cases, but um, because Nanak is dedicated to unprivileged processes, what we want to do before restricting the current process uh, to avoid um, some kind of attacks is to kind of make the process pledge to the kernel that it will not use, it will not gain more privileges thanks to, like I said before, uh, set ready binaries or stuff like that. So for this, um, we just add a PSTL call with the set and your command. So just before the long logistic itself. And here I just add some logs uh, to make it more uh, um, interesting. Okay, so we did the five steps. And uh, well, I guess uh, now we can uh, build everything which are already done. Um, and I guess the resulting uh, package is this one. So um, in this case, on the same machine, I will install it. So the same, that's a bit light. Um, that's good. Then I will uh, restart. So that's not, I know it's not a good one because there's no log uh, talking about landlock. So um, I'll just build again. Um, Let's be sure of that. Okay. Okay, so I'm building again a Lighty with a source code, so I'll be sure that uh, it is a patch version. Uh, it is quite quick. Um, And then we'll see if this still works here. So it will not, of course. Okay, I'm not there. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we started it. And there is no sign of Lanark. So uh, must have missed something. Mm. Mm. I thought debugging was an exercise for the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so did you spot the bug? I didn't. Um, Okay, so let's switch to the backup. Uh, okay. Mm. I think that's it. Uh, no. Okay, yes. Let's start again. So 
suspense. Let's check to be sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know what changed. Um, um, Yeah, well, that's uh, failed. Sorry. Um, but you don't have any patches in this folder. Sorry? Or do we have white patches from other folder? Or from this one? Sorry? Land walk patches. Yes. I think you download this slight dark Z, so it's yeah. an original one, right? Uh, is it unpatched? This one is is patch. Um, yeah, this one is patched. Um, hmm, okay, uh, so I guess, uh, this should, no. Um, I guess I check out another branch, but the file didn't change somehow. I don't know. Um, uh, that worked um, yesterday. Um, so the thing is, I know it's not working because there's no log here, but there should be because they are in the code. So, uh, yeah. Um, Yeah, anyway, sorry. So I just wrap up quickly. Uh, so the idea here was to, uh, well, patch web server. Um, so the idea is to make it kind of transparent for users uh, and well integrated uh, without external uh, support. So this is kind of quick to implement, uh, but even quicker if you know the code. Um, so to give you some idea, the next step for Unlock is to add new features, new access consoles, um, and edit feature to make it uh, easier to debug, and uh, yeah, to improve uh, kind of performance, even if they are uh, already good. Um, so if you want to contribute, um, well, test it, use it. Um, you can um, uh, write some 
test if you want uh, to implement it. It's a uh, multiple people, people implemented uh, libraries. Um, so this is currently uh, Rust, Go, Python, Naskell libraries, maybe more. Um, yeah. Um, and if you have any thought, because um, so the next step for the network access control is to kind of make it possible to handle uh, UDP uh, in a use in a useful way. So um, that's that was kind of easy for TCP because semantic is really clear. For UDP, it is a well, it is an unconnected socket. So um, yeah, what would make sense for an application to restrict? Because uh, well, you cannot differentiate between a connect or well, between kind of a receiving connection or establishing connection. So yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, take a look at the um, GitHub. Uh, you should be able to um, to do this. Uh, to replicate this uh, virtual machine with everything and it will work. I it didn't here. I don't know why. Um, I guess it's uh, just uh, detail, but I miss it. It's called the demo curve. Yeah, yeah, it is. But yeah, I was really prepared, but anyway. Um, and uh, yes, thank you for that. Is If you have any questions, you can ask them now. Maybe it's too short, so later. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Like the best answer would be download it, try Yeah, yeah. And, and help me find, uh, try this bug. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.